Dr. Elzingo will speak to propaganda and communication from the Dutch perspective. Dutch perspective. Okay, that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. First of all, while we're ready for the presentation to start, I would like to thank the university and Raimondo specifically for inviting us here. I'm uh, from the Netherlands with my colleague uh, Ute Freiburg. Uh, we are uh, here to talk about propaganda, but also to prepare a visit with our students in uh, January. And I'm very happy to see so many students here, because I know you have holidays right now, so it must be very special to attend this uh, conference. because we're a nation of merchants and we have ever been so and we don't have a very strong political movement in our country but what we do have is a royal house and I'm today, today I'm going to talk about the House of Orange as a brand because uh, maybe you know that uh, a few weeks ago we had a new king Willem Alexander, William Alexander and I'm going to talk about it here he is. Do you know him? Yeah. Did, did you watch the coronation or? Yes. Yeah? And did you like it? Yes. And what was the image of the coronation? What What are your memories? We will not have to like that. That's the memory. <laughs> okay. That's the memory. Just okay. Okay. Um, we have to admit that uh, the Orange family has done a great job. I'm going to read a little and talk to you on Provist. Um, has done a great job of promoting the Orange monarchy, winning hearts and minds from the general public. But first, a little history. What you see here are uh, some of the uh, uh, older oranges. Um, from the very birth, of the Netherlands as a state in the 1500s, the House of Orange as the stadtholders, so they were given a mandate to uh, uh, rule over certain cities and provinces. They were in the tug of war for power with the states general, the parliament, the representatives of the seven states making up the Netherlands, and the regions, which were the trader dominated rulers of the powerful cities, and in particular Amsterdam. And the Orange family won sort of. Um, they became the ruling family in the Netherlands and were gradually uh, seen as royalty for the outside world. And it helped that the Oranges were princes of the tiny uh, princedom of Orange in France and the Counts of Nassau in Germany. So they were in Dutch at all. But their real power base was the Netherlands with its substantial economic rights, might, and an army that was too Spanish and French, French, and a navy that for a long time was unrivaled. But the might of the Republic had been led away in protected wars with France against Louis XIV, Sankey, and after the Peace of Utrecht in 1713, the Netherlands became a backwater, and the might of the origins waned. But here we see a powerful scene. A Prince of Orange at Waterloo, wounded by a bullet, not because of his heroism, but because of his stupidity. <laughs> That's another story. Um, at the Vienna Congress in 1815, William I, seen there, became the sovereign Orange King of the United Northern and Southern Netherlands, the Count of Limburg and the Archduke of Luxembourg. He could treat his lands as personal property and did so especially in the case of Limburg and Luxembourg. He became very rich and he was an early capitalist. But times had already changed. Early 19th century saw plenty of pomp and circumstance and an attempt to restore the principle of legal sovereignty, but political and legal reforms of Napoleon were almost 
mostly left intact. Thus, there was a government that could force him to give up much of his powers when the Netherlands and Belgium uh, went separate ways and abdicated. His son had to accept a new constitution in 1848, which made him a proper constitutional king. So ever since, the Oranges had to accept a role in the, on the sideline, guarding over their own uh, fortune and keeping an eye on public opinion. So that's where the propaganda comes in. Meanwhile, the Hanoverian kings of Great Britain never had to deal with the upheavals of uh, Napoleon and had already been sort of constitutionally bound and therefore only needed some evolutionary elements and adjustments in their role right into the 21st century. Thus, while dynasties broke, the British monarchy never lost contact with the ancient throne of England and the Dutch nation state gave rise to the kings of Holland, whereas the kings of England gave rise to the British nation-state. Now here's Be Beatrix. She's the mother of William Alexander. So what's the brand identity of the Netherlands? Um, to explain, um, I am uh, an art director by profession. I'm now an art professor. Um, and together with Ute, we are consultants uh, for uh, a lot of national and multinational companies. Um, during our work we have to consult, uh, we are taking um, assignments from uh, the industry and let our students work for their brands. So that's very nice to uh, see how students uh, make their own decisions in uh, creating propaganda because we're into advertising and communication, are creating propaganda for our industry. Okay, now back to Beatrix and um, the brand identity of the House of Orders because she was very important for it. Former Queen Beatrix has tried to style herself as hardworking, intellectual, art loving, steeped in tradition without closing her eyes to modernity, uh, democratic by conviction but autocratic by inclination. A devoted mother, but well aware of the sacrifices required for her particular career. She has clearly put an effort in creating a recognizable silhouette and dutifully performed at Queen's Day, which is the national celebration of the birthday of the Queen, and foreign trips. But at heart, you think she saw herself and wanted to be seen as a sounding board for prime ministers. So there's parliament again in the constitution. She has, she has thus styled herself in the tradition of a royal dynasty that gives her her role by right of birth and duty of performance. In other words, she saw herself as a regal role as head of state modified by the demands of a democratic constitution. Because she was very good at it, hardworking, and paid attention to her ceremonial role, she managed to pull, to pull off the trick of performing that role without causing constitutional crisis. It is, hard to, uh, it is hard to believe that it is a coincidence that since the last elections a year ago, uh, the monarch has lost most important remain, uh, its most important containing institutional role, forming the government. So we may never know whether Beatrix suggested to the Republicans that she would not, not oppose a proposal from the parliament to take things in their own hand, knowing that she would advocate in a year but it is not hard to imagine that she did. It will spare her son an image problem when this would have happened before the election early in this way. Um, William Alexander is not known for his intelligence, so um, there comes in Maxima. So back to the coronation of the tools, the propaganda tools, which I call propaganda tools, marketing or advertising. The oranges used to communicate. Um, this is the stylized logo, the monogram of William Alexander, and it was used everywhere. It was displayed on public buildings. And so this is the stylized version. Um, and when you um, look closely, you can see a similarity with the V for victory of the World War II era. Another thing, V for Victory was expressed by Winston Churchill 
in this way. William Alexander made his own sign, which was this. So on King's Day, Coronation Day, people greeted each other with the W of William Alexander. Uh, pictures of Maxima and Wilma Alexander looking optimistic, have been staring us, at us in the face. Um, from billboards, anywhere. And they had a million or so children. Another example of the W's. This is Coronation Day. But what we also had was the, the King's Games. A million children in Holland um, were having a national sports day styled after Willem Alexander. So you see him here in a very cartoony way. And all the children got a t shirt. So the whole country was turned orange. So it's a very strong color. And anywhere you went on that day, all you could see was orange, orange, orange. And the These kind of symbols in the streets, on television, um, even in the sky with banners of flowing after airplanes. Um, and and the, the, the opening of the games was televised, so it was live on, on television. Um, everybody could watch, they had a very high uh, viewer rate. So, in all, a very uh, solid way of advertising the monarchy and uh, brand values of sportivity connected to that monarchy. They have given carefully controlled TV interviews and of course had a day-long televised co coronation that gave rise to an endless stream of news items and allowed them to appear with traditional regalia as well as designer dresses and parade their young daughters. And last but not least, the parade of the, the campaign went viral as companies gave away orange crowning merchandise, sold orange t-shirts, pastry, flags and peppers, and citizens dutifully dressed up in orange, often reusing the orange they had acquired for sport events like the football championships. In short, from a marketing point of view, the coronation was part of a well-used frost-mingled propaganda event to market the House of Orange and the monarchy. There they are. The new royal couple and their marketing group, guided by Maxima, um, has styled itself as glamorous, sporty, modern, and busy, yet quite normal, as you can see here, and family oriented, as you can see here. In other words, they are styled as celebrities. Maxima is clearly the brand here. She can call herself queen rather than princess. And only scholars and politicians will notice that her queen title is just honorary, completely different from the constitutional queen, uh, like Beatrix was. Maxima is also simply the better looking of the two. And she seems to enjoy the intention of the media and has the more interesting from commoner to queen background and is more careful in what she says <coughs> in public, um, which are four great advantages for being a celebrity. Uh, William Alexander is known to uh, make mistakes in, during interviews. He puts remarks in them which are then, uh, well, not so well. Uh, uh, well, he puts too big remarks in his interviews, in short. So Maxima is like a sort of uh, guide for him, uh, and uh, she uh, walks through the interview uh, and puts him on the second place. Both have performed uh, official roles. Alexander has, to try, has tried to style himself as water expert and was a member of the Olympic Committee. Maxima has acted as a uh, proponent of microcredits, both accentuating her previous career as an investment banker and diverting from its more unpopular annotation. In the end, their public image is mostly that of cheerleaders. Cheerleaders for the Dutch skaters, the national football team, or the national hockey team. Conveniently dressed, all those teams, in their orange brand color. They are jet setters with houses in the Netherlands, Argentina, uh, Greece, and Mozambique. 
They are dressed in expensive haute couture, and their brand image is carefully guarded by their PR advisors and will not change much. I think we have another picture. Here you are. Now uh, that's the king. The Orange family, while being under scrutiny and res responsibility of the government, is clearly distinct from the Dutch state, unlike before most other dynasties. This has always been the case. Thus, the Orange monarchy seems actually rather well close to cope with the 21st century, <laughs> better than the British monarchy, and the Oranges have been very good at reinventing their brand for a very long time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.